Hey everyone, this is Jordan from SleekLens.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to cut out pretty much anything in Photoshop and I'm going to do it to this particular photo right here. This is a, a portrait image and I've pretty much chosen the, more, the hardest image possible because as you can see I have all of this hair to deal with. But I want to show you that if you can, if you can nail down this technique, you're going to be able to cut out pretty much anything from trees to landmarks to buildings, anything like that. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is just kind of analyze the photo. So again, I have all of this hair to deal with and I can use a bunch of different tools. I have the magic wand tool over here where I can click in a white area and it's going to try to sample around the white area. But as you can see, if we were to zoom in here, uh, if I choose the magic wand and I click on the white area to select it, it's not selecting a lot of the hair. So I can get a lot of uh, different color variations and it's not going to select a whole lot of the natural hair. And I, I kind of want all of all of the detail as possible. So I'm going to deselect that. I'm actually going to use what's called a channel selection. So how you actually do that is go to uh, go in your Lightroom and go to the channels tab up here and you're going to see the RGB which is the red, green, and blue channels all put together. But then you're going to see the red channel. So if we click on that one it shows the uh, the more red tones on the grayscale image green and then blue. Now what you're really looking for here is the most contrast of the photo. So the most darker darks and the most whiter whites. And so typically the blue channel actually has most of that. So I'm actually going to use the blue channel here. So what I'm going to do is click on the blue channel and I'm going to create a duplicate of this blue channel. So I'm going to drag it down to the new channel box here and I get a new channel that says blue copy. And now what I'm going to do is actually apply a levels adjustment. What this levels adjustment is going to do is allow me to darken the blacks and uh, increase the whites to create even more contrast. The more contrast you have when trying to make this selection, which is ultimately what we're trying to do, the more contrast you have, the easier the selection will be. So how I'm going to do the levels is click Command or Control L on my uh, keyboard here and I get the levels dialog box here. And this is where I can increase or decrease the uh, the levels of the photo. So the first thing I know I want to do is take the black slider and I want to start darkening up the image. And as you can see I'm darkening, I'm really kind of concentrating on just the hair. I'm not worried about the face or the arm or anything like that. I'm just worrying about the hair. So I'm increasing the contrast of that hair. I can even take the whites to try to brighten up the whites a little bit. And as you can see, the image starts getting a little bit more brighter, a little bit more contrast in the image. And you can play with the mid-tone slider as well to try to help with this. Uh, but what you're really trying to do is just trying to find a really good definition between the hair and the background. So again, I'm just kind of concentrating on the hair and uh, I like the way that looks. I think that's going to be a good contrast. You don't want to go too far because you can see if we go all the way with the blacks, we have this really weird looking defringing going on. So I want to kind of just make sure I have a nice subtle contrast with the image. So probably roughly around there. So now I'm going to click OK. So now what I'm going to do is just click the Commander Control key on your keyboard and click on that blue channel. And as you can see, now we have the marching ants uh, marching everywhere and it's selected a lot of the hair, which is actually what we want. So now we're going to go back to our Layers panel and I'm going to invert the selection. And what that's going to do is select the actual model. It's not going to select the background, which is technically what we're selecting now. So I'm going to go to Select, Inverse, and that will inverse the selection. And now I can apply a, a layer mask. So there we go. I have my model cut out. And for the most part, everything looks OK. We have to deal with a little bit of the hair issues here. And as you can see, if I were to zoom in, uh, the face and some of the eyes and some of the other features around here actually are transparent as well. So we need to correct that. And how we're going to do that is with this layer mask. So I'm going to click on the layer mask and I'm going to get a white brush. And white, a white brush is just going to paint back in the details of the face. So basically what I'm going to go do is go around and see where the parts of the image that are transparent because it's going to be in the lighter parts of the image and just kind of paint that back. You don't have to be super precise with it just yet uh, because what we're doing is just trying to fix some of these smaller problem areas. So as you can see we have this little bracelet here that we need to take care of and I'm just kind of painting in these little diamonds here to bring those back. There we go. Just make sure some of the lighter parts of the image are taken care of. This shoulder here. Have a little highlight on the shoulder. 
Uh, and for the most part, I think that looks okay. So now we can actually uh, put this selection to the test and see if we did a good job. So what I'm going to do is make a brand new layer. I'm going to drag that layer to the bottom underneath and I'm going to apply a color to the layer. So I'm going to go to edit fill. I'm going to click the color box here and I'm going to pick a nice color. Uh, let's go with a kind of a, a maroon somewhere around there and click OK. So there we go. Our M, our selection looks pretty decent. Uh, you can tell we have what is called uh, kind of fringing around the color fringing around the hair. And what we're going to do is take care of that in just a second. But I'm basically just looking around the uh, the image to see if I can find anything else that I missed as far as the layer mask. I, can, I missed a little spot right here. So I can click on the layer mask and paint that back in. And again, just going around, I'm really just kind of concentrating on the hair and just making sure everything is selected. Um, so probably roughly around there looks good. All right, so now I need to take care of the color fringing. And the way the way you can do that is actually make a layer mask and clip that layer mask to your adjustment layer and uh, use the clone stamp tool. So I'm going to create a new layer here and I'm going to clip this layer to the uh, the model image. So the way I'm going to do that is hold Alter Option on the keyboard, and you see that you get this little box with an arrow, and that's the clipping. So I'm going to clip that, click in between those two, and now any adjustment I make, so if I were to take this color or take this uh, brush and paint over the model just like that, it's only affecting the model and not the background. So it's clipped to that layer. So I'm going to do that here, and now I'm going to get my clone stamp tool, and before I start clone stamping, I'm going to change my blend mode to darken. And what that's going to do is just take care of the lighter parts of the image. So what I can do is just kind of freehand this a little bit. And you don't have to be super precise with it. But you can uh, sample here and just sample from the inside of the hair and just kind of paint over the hair. And as you can see, it starts taking care of that, that color fringing, but also brings back the natural color of the hair. So all I'm doing is just kind of going around the image with the clone stamp and just sampling random spots. Uh, when I get to close to the body here, I need to pay attention to that a little bit more. Um, but yeah, just going around the image just like this. All right, so there we go. I basically uh, just kind of clone stamped all the way around the hair. And as you can see right here, I kind of messed up a little bit. And uh, what the reason I did that is because I want to show you how you can get rid of this if you mess up. So what you can do is click on this uh, the clone stamp layer that you have, create a layer mask for that one, get a, uh, a black brush, and you can just paint that away. So you don't have to worry about erasing it. You just need to paint it away just like that. And it's just that easy to get rid of that part. So now what we can do is now that our model is successfully cut out, we can worry about the, the hair that's around here. So we have a lot of flyaway hair that's over here. And uh, now we can have kind of make a decision of what we need to do with that. Do we want to keep it? Does it look okay? Or can we just get rid of it? So I'm going to elect to get rid of it, but I'm going to get a make sure my brush is a soft brush of hardness of zero. And I'm going to go back down to the, the layer mask that we applied to the model. And I'm just going to paint some of that away just to kind of lessen some of that uh, that area that we uh, can notice a little bit of fringing still. So I'm just going to get rid of some of this stuff uh, just like that. And since I have a soft brush, it's kind of blending in a little bit more. So there we go. Some hairs down here that are kind of flyaways. And we can take care of that. All right, so there we go. There is our model successfully cut out. Now, if we want to change the color of the background, all we have to do is apply a, a hue saturation layer uh, right above that, that background layer there. And now we can just change the color to any color we want to. And no matter what we change it to, our model is going to be completely blended in to the background. Uh, we can change it to any color, kind of like a kind of like a green color. Maybe click the colorize and do kind of green there. Um, but you, as you can see, just it really blends in really well and looks really nice. So that is one easy way to cut out pretty much anything in Photoshop uh, with using a channel selection to make your selection. Uh, you can also use the many, many selection tools they have in Photoshop, but this is probably the easiest way to deal with uh, images that are kind of problem images. If you have something that is uh, pretty pretty straight lines and definite contrast between the subject and the background, it'll be a lot easier than this. But this is probably one of the most harder things to get down is uh, adjustments like this when it has hair in it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that Photoshop tutorial on cutting anything out in Photoshop. This has been Jordan from Sleekland, and I'll see you in the next video.